SEMA is one of the world's largest automotive trade shows. You can see all kinds of crazy car builds from classic cars to race cars, even farm trucks converted to have formula suspension. But it doesn't stop there. We get Rolls Royce Starry Night headliners and wheel wells. I've been going to SEMA since I was 14 years old, which is technically too young to be going to SEMA, but my dad would sneak me in anyways. Originally, we would only just go as an enthusiast, but eventually we were building a car with the purpose of being displayed at SEMA and even getting into the automotive trade. But this year was a year we were kind of just going as enthusiasts again, and more so just enjoying the show. And one of the things I wanted to check out were some of the most epic sim rigs I could possibly find. And I ended up finding some pretty sweet sim rigs. The first one I ran into was this turnkey system from Podium One. This system as configured was $20,000, but as you see it here, everything is completely included, even down to the computer. So there would be nothing else that you would need to buy. Basically turn on and drive. The big ticket item that really drives up the price for this rig is the Gen 5 D-Box. These run for about $8,000, so that's a good portion of the whole rig. And this is what I was really interested in test driving. Of course, it's got a Simicube 2 Pro, Asetek Forte pedals, which I ended up liking very much, especially with that stiff throttle spring upgrade, and the Cube Controls wheel felt good too. But the D-Box was a very, very cool experience. If you've ever driven a manual car and you're in first gear and you're going a little too slow, not giving enough gas, you probably know that feeling of the car bucking back and forth very hard. And this D-Box simulated that feeling perfectly. I mean, if you look at me, I'm getting absolutely shaken and it felt pretty authentic. Although since we're at a trade show, this D-Box is probably set a little bit more aggressively than you would typically want for yourself just to give that wow factor and show what it's capable of but i would keep that in mind if the motion looks a little bit too ridiculous the d-box did end up being a ton of fun to drive though that push forward in the braking zones it really does add a lot to the immersion and it really starts to give you that feeling of actually driving a car i still don't know if it's enough to give you that seat of the pants feeling that really gives you the cues when you're driving a real car but there's no doubt that it adds just a ton of fun to the experience and just takes it to the next level. I'm grateful for the Podium One guys letting me have this experience. I had a great time chatting with them. But yeah, overall it was a ton of fun. If I was to do a motion rig for my own home setup, this is probably what I would do. Because the next two rigs I saw at SEMA, I don't think they're going to fit in my room. And they might be a little bit out of my budget. But for now... Let's just enjoy a little bit of no commentary, just driving, and appreciating this awesome setup in all its glory. Right. 
now we get to this crazy motion rig from Evolve Motorsports. I want to say all included PC and everything. This thing comes in around almost about 40,000. So you're probably not going to see me doing any reviews of this anytime soon. This was at the Optima booth and technically this was only for the people in the Optima challenge. But I talked to one of the Optima guys working there and he hooked me up, let me drive it. So that was awesome. Extremely appreciative of that because this thing was epic. It is running a semi cube as well and Evolve Motorsports own brake pedal system as well as e-brake system, which both felt really good. Unfortunately, I know you can't see the screens very well because of the glare, but this is running Dirt Rally 2. And the unfortunate part is that I probably focused more on getting used to the car in here because I don't do a whole bunch of Dirt Rally. And this rig was just so wild. It was a little difficult to get used to it. I was just more so trying not to look like an idiot as best as I could, but it was a ton of fun. So this is a 60 OF system, so you get surge and traction loss compared to just the 3 DOF that the D-Box gives. And another big thing about this rig is that the monitors are mounted to the chassis itself and move with you versus just being fixed and only the rig moving, which for some can be a little bit jarring. After trying them out, I don't really mind the fixed monitors anymore. I thought I would dislike that, but when I tried the D-Box, I was okay with that. But I definitely think if you can have the monitors moving with you with the motion, that that's definitely a, a better solution. So I can appreciate that with this setup. Rally was a really good demo for this too, just really putting it through its paces and really feeling the traction loss of the whole system rotating left to right. I think one of my biggest takeaways was just how good it felt when you would pull the e-brake and then the whole rig would lean and slightly rotate. It was very convincing for that weight transfer of initiating a drift and I really, really enjoyed that. But I did also get to drive it on Laguna Seca on the original Assetto Corsa in an AMG GT3 car, which was much more my speed. And the motion here is a lot more tame than it is in the rally car. Much more subtle, but still very enjoyable and immersive while giving you the details that you need, but not checking you about. And I do gotta say, going through the corkscrew felt really cool in this rig. I just wish I could have a lot more time with these motion rigs with settings that I'm used to for the brake and steering. That way I can get a much better idea of the extra information I'm getting from the motion system is helping me drive or just making the experience a lot more fun. But I'll let this roll for just a little bit longer and then we'll check out the last ring. between checking out cars and sim rigs, I was kind of going seat shopping. And here I found the same seat that Max Verstappen uses in his own sim rig. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe so I can make irresponsible decisions and buy this ridiculous <laughs> racing seat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And the final noteworthy sim rig was this $150,000 rig from SimCraft. Unfortunately, I literally saw this on my way out and you have to schedule in order to test drive it. So I didn't get a test drive it myself, but oh boy. And from what I understand, you could even use this for actual flight hours for your pilot's license or something to that extent, which is wild. I had a good conversation with one of the guys there. He was telling me about it, but unfortunately the audio is pretty much useless. You can't really hear much of anything. So I really can't tell you much about it other than it looks pretty sophisticated. I'm sure there's a good reason why it cost 150000 versus even that $40,000 sim rig. But like I said, I saw this on my way out. I didn't get much time with it and it just looked wild. Although $150,000 and you're not going to have OLED screens? Come on. Is this where we're going to skimp here? But that's pretty much it. Kind of a simple video. I just wanted to showcase some of the cool stuff I saw at SEMA. I had lost this footage for a couple months, and I just wanted to finally get it out there. If you enjoyed the video, I greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, subscribe if you want to see some more content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.